I found it in a random parking lot, and it fits my head, so fuck it, I'm wearing it. What's going on y'all? V Brandon Brownson here, and as I'm sure you can tell, still haven't found my damn tripod. So we are on episode 28 of TBB Unscripted, 28 episodes, that's weird to think about, and uh, I have a few kind of big bits of news. The biggest chunk of news, at least the biggest for me, is that I am now a high school graduate. I very recently, like two weeks ago, maybe even only a week ago, uh, finished the high school program that I was a part of, and I am now a high school graduate. My graduation ceremony is in a couple weeks, and I am really, really happy about that. I'm, uh, actually really proud of myself, and that's something that I don't feel very often. Like, I've talked on this channel about how I don't really have the greatest self-esteem, and... I'm actually really proud of myself right now. Uh, however, this does come with uh, good news, but kind of bad news, mostly good news. Um, I actually start culinary class on Monday, so when you guys finally see this video, um, it'll probably be tomorrow that I'm starting, and this is good news because I'm starting culinary school. Uh, but this is bad news because I thought that I was going to have uh, quite a bit of time on my hands to do video stuff. They were expecting me to finish the high school program a little later, and I was supposed to sign up for culinary starting in uh, January. But because I finished as soon as I did, I'm starting on Monday. I start tomorrow. So that means I'm probably only going to be doing one video a week still. Uh, this week was an exception because I had this week off. I'm still going to be working on some of the bigger projects I said I was going to be working on. I still want to work on my parody album. Speaking of, um, my latest album, uh, Failing Upward, is now on Spotify and iTunes. And that's really big. Now... Uh, it's on iTunes just because I think it's cool to be able to say that my music's on iTunes. I'm still, I still have all of it on Bandcamp if you guys want to download it for free, but I'm also offering it on iTunes. Um, and I have my music on Spotify, which I think is really big. Um, <coughs> hopefully this is going to make it to where more people discover my music. Hopefully this is going to be what helps Dr. Frankenrein get his big breakthrough. And that's really, really exciting for me. Yeah, that's kind of the big bits of news. Um, I have a new Theory Addict out, uh, the Scooby-Doo episode of Theory Addict, which um, kind of all came together really easily. I had the script written out a while ago, and I said that I wanted to do a bunch of horror-themed uh, episodes of Theory Addict, but unfortunately with school, that didn't come to be. So, at the very least, I wanted to do, like, one of the creepier episodes of Theory Addict I had planned out, so I did this Gumi New episode, and I think it turned out really, really good, so you guys should watch that. Um, I don't really know if I have anything else to talk about, so on to your questions, my favorite part of doing this. I love doing TVB Unscripted because I get to answer your questions. We go over this every month. Um, the first couple questions come from Mr. Squibbles, so now that you started reading it, who is your favorite character in the Iron Druid Chronicles so far? Uh, the Iron Druid Chronicles being a really good series of books, uh, well I assume a really good series, I read the first uh, book of the series and I really enjoyed it. Um, Oberon, I fucking love Oberon. Uh, Atticus is also a really good character. I see a lot of myself in Atticus, minus uh, the 2,000 years of experience. But Oberon is just such a fun character, and I love him to death. Um, if we were to do a new game, just hypothetically, because I like where ours is going right now, what kind of setting would you like to play that we haven't played before, slash are planning to play? 
I assume that you mean Dungeons and Dragons, so like what setting would I like to play in Dungeons and Dragons that I haven't done before? Um, I've never done a post-apocalyptic campaign. I know that my group has done like post-apocalyptic zombie campaigns type stuff before, but I've never been a part of that and I think it would be really fun to do a uh, zombie apocalypse type setting, although I've never really been in a campaign where it's more modern day. I've always been like, it's always been fantasy D&D type stuff or like super futuristic Star Wars type stuff. I've never played a modern day setting. Um, at least that's lasted more than a one-off, so any form of modern day setting I think would be really cool, but I'd really like to play in a uh, post-apocalyptic, zombie apocalypse type deal. Mr. Squibble's final question is, also since there are rumors about it, who would you like to see in a live-action X-Men TV show? Um, I mean, Wolverine, obviously, Cyclops, obviously, Jean Grey, obviously, um, <coughs> I don't think that you can really do X-Men without those three or at least starting off with those three, because they all play such a big role in the lore of X-Men. Um, personally, I would love to see Nightcrawler, and I would love to see Gambit. Those are my two favorite X-Men. Uh, Colossus, I think, would be a really good character. Um, part of me wants to say Storm, but I also want to say probably Storm and Jubilee to round up the team. Uh, just because 90s nostalgia, I love Jubilee, and Storm is a phenomenal character. Uh, so, yeah, Wolverine, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Storm, Jubilee, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Gambit. That would be the team I would want to see. Zim294 has eight questions. Hopefully I'll be able to answer them all. Uh, first question is, ever thought of moving the old stuff like Roundtable in Seasons 1 and 2 of, you know, Pisses Me Off, over here on the new channel, would love you long time. I already have moved all the episodes of the Roundtable over here. Um, at least I think they have. I know that there is a playlist on my channel that, uh, has all the old episodes in the Roundtable. Um, if anyone's wondering what happened to the Roundtable, um, anytime that me and Mr. Squibbles get together, we don't think to film anything. We always, like, sit down and have amazing discussions that would make amazing episodes of The Round Table, but we never film it. Uh, one of the big projects I'm actually working on right now involves Mr. Squibbles very heavily, that's all I'm gonna say on that. But, uh, <coughs> I'm pretty sure that the old episodes of The Round Table are on my channel if they're not um i'd definitely be open to going back and re-uploading them as far as seasons one and two if you know it pisses me off first of all i have like 12 episodes from season two that never aired that um i want to put together into like a compilation i don't think i want to release them all as their own videos but i would love to do a compilation as, like, the hidden episodes, the lost episodes, um, although I'd also like to do compilations of the first two seasons of, you know, it pisses me off, take, like, the best episodes, the best moments, throw them together into a couple videos, and then upload that to the channel. I don't think that I would want to upload every individual episode of, you know, it pisses me off, season one and two, simply because there's so much of it. Between those two seasons alone, I think that's like 30, 40 videos, and I don't really want to spam my channel with that much at one time. Zim294, second question, if you can change any wrestling storyline, what would it be and why? The 2001 Invasion Angle. Anyone who knows anything about professional wrestling should understand why I picked that, but uh, just for the sake of fully answering the question, the 2001 Invasion Angle had so much potential to be the biggest money-making storyline in professional wrestling history. And pretty much from top to bottom, they fucked that up. It should never have been a McMahon feud. They needed more big names, and they could have got those big names if they didn't waste all that money on the XFL. Um, but realistically, even with the talent that they already had, they could have 
uh, very well done a really good invasion angle. The big issue, the big two issues was one, they made it into another part of the fucking McMahon feud, which everyone was sick of, and two, they didn't make WCW seem like a legitimate threat. The WCW guys were getting jobbed left and right. All you need to do is look at uh, Diamond Dallas Page. Diamond Dallas Page's first appearance on pay-per-view, he got his ass kicked by The Undertaker for a good five, six, seven minutes. Um, not even in a match, in just a random fight, a random segment. Uh, DDP got his ass kicked for five, six, seven minutes. Um, that is a perfect example of how this entire thing was booked. It was absolute bullshit, and it, it should have been such a huge angle. Question number three, what is the weirdest thing you've done in public or in front of a stranger? That's a really difficult question because I do weird shit in public all the time. Um, I don't really care about what other people think of me. I just try to make my friends laugh, so... I say a bunch of really weird shit and do a bunch of really weird shit uh, all the time in public. I know back in the day, um, I used to run headfirst in this shit all the time, which uh, has come back to haunt me. I do not advise doing that, but that was one of the big things I'd do to make people laugh. I didn't care who was around or I'd say like really outlandish shit. Um, to those of you who actually know me IRL, go ahead and leave some comments down there, because I can't think of a single story um, to tell, but I know I've done a bunch of really weird shit in public. Zim294's fourth question, cheeseburgers or pizza? That's really difficult, but I love a good burger, so I'm going to have to go with cheeseburger. Question number five, would you ever start something on DeviantArt if you had the time or someone to help you? I actually do have a DeviantArt account where I used to post a bunch of poetry, uh, which looking back at it, a bunch of it was just like emo musing bullshit, but uh, as far as like artistic stuff, I don't have any artistic talent as far as drawing goes, so as much as I'd love to do something like that, I really can't. Uh, if I had someone to help me, I'd just advise that they do stuff and post it on their DeviantArt or post it wherever they want to. Um, although realistically, I wouldn't advise that you post anything on DeviantArt because DeviantArt uh, reserves the rights to sell shit that you post. I saw a giant post on Tumblr about this, so uh, DeviantArt is kind of a shitty website, so don't post shit there, or they can sell it and you will make nothing. Question number six, what type of powers would irradiated heroin give you? The power to sleep forever, because overdoses. Don't fuck with heroin, kids. Question number seven, creepiest thing you've seen on the interwebs that isn't creepypasta. Oh, fuck. Are we really going to go down that rabbit hole? Um, the scariest thing I've ever seen that wasn't supposed to be scary... Uh, I can't find a music video to fucking save my life, but there was, uh, this really weird music video I saw where, like, the singer was using a double-ended dildo as a microphone, and the whole thing was all bright and cheery and looked like a PBS cartoon, only there were, like, chicks doing, like, lesbian stuff in the background, and, uh, the whole thing was just really disturbing, and I think it was supposed to be funny, but it just turned out really fucking weird. I've been looking for this video for the better part of two years, and I cannot find it, and that makes me so sad, because it is one of the weirdest, creepiest things I've ever seen on the internet. Zim294's final question is, favorite creepypasta? Uh, Ben Drowned. It's really, really hard to go against one of the classics. Uh, not to mention, that's one of the creepypastas I remember uh, actually creeping me out. I'm kind of a difficult person to scare uh, when I know that I'm supposed to be scared, but this really fucking weirded me out. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the classic Ben Round. Blue Rose points out Pope this wasn't Theory Addict. Yeah, I realize I accidentally said Theory Addict when I was supposed to say Timmy B Unscripted in the last episode. My bad. The final couple questions come from Duncan Batch. Uh, first question, what is your favorite game system? Um, 
as much as I'd like to say one of the classics that I grew up with, I'd have to go with the Xbox 360 solely because, um, some of my fondest gaming memories were on the 360, a lot of my favorite games were on the 360, um, and as much as I want to be, like, nostalgia blind and say the N64 or something like that, um, Xbox 360 all the way. Second question, what animal would you have as a pet? If I can pick any animal, I want a penguin. I want a fucking penguin. I love those little bass. I'm like, here, let me show you something. My friends recently came back from Chicago, and they got me this. Isn't this the cutest fucking thing? Ah, I love penguins so much. And I am going to put Oswald here. Yeah, his name is Oswald Cobblepot. Um, but yeah, penguin. I love, fucking love penguins. Dumbest thing you did in front of a guy or girl you like. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I really don't give a fuck, so I have done all sorts of really weird outlandish shit in front of people I like. Um, so it's really hard to pick, like, one particular thing, and I know that this is, like, a huge letdown to people who are expecting really juicy stories, but uh, the list is so, so fucking massive. Um... One of the weirder things I ever did was I wrestled a match in front of uh, a girl who I really liked. It's, uh, I used to do backyard wrestling, and I portrayed this character named Balls Rotten from Nutley, New Jersey. And my whole gimmick was that in every match, I got just racked in the balls. There was this uh, one event where a girl who I liked at the time uh, came out to watch us wrestle, so... I fucking wrestled a full, like, 20-30 minute match in front of this girl I really liked. Um, and that's honestly the only one that comes to mind right now, but I know I've done way fucking weirder, way stupider things in front of people who I like. Advice question. I'm in a long distance relationship and I want to give my girlfriend a gift. Should it be a necklace or a bracelet that I made myself on a 3D printer? You know, both of those are really good. Like, the thing that really makes that is that you made it. You made a design and you crafted this by hand or by 3D printer, but you know what I mean. So no matter what you go with, it's definitely going to mean quite a lot because it's something that um, you crafted. However, ultimately it depends on what you're trying to make. Some things will work really well as a bracelet. I'm personally leaning toward necklace, just because I personally like necklaces more than bracelets. Uh, it's all a matter of preference. This is something like subtly drop it in conversation, like, Hey, what do you like more, necklaces or bracelets? Uh, no, just find a way to ask. Don't make it too obvious that you're thinking about making something, but um, ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the final question is, what is your favorite article of clothing? Um, I really like this shirt, just for the record. Um, this is one of my favorite shirts. Um, my favorite article of clothing, I actually don't know where it is. Um, it was the uh, green and blue tie-dye shirt that I had with like the skeleton playing guitar on it. That was my favorite shirt that I have owned in a really long time, and I have no idea what the fuck happened to it. As far as articles of clothing that I own right now, it is a three-way tie between uh, this jacket, which I have had for the better part of five years. It is beat to shit. It does not offer any protection against the cold anymore. But I've owned this thing for so long that it's like family to me at this point, as weird as that is. Um, yeah, three-way tie between this jacket, my You Know What Pisses Me Off shirt, my Russell Jimmy shirt. Uh, the Russell Jimmy shirt, just because that meme is still really fucking funny to me. And You Know What Pisses Me Off shirt, just because I think it's so cool that um, I'm at the point where I can sell merchandise. Um, where, like, a show that I did, a weird fucking show, it, uh, is popular enough to where I can sell t-shirts of it. Like, I own a t-shirt based around something that I came up with. I just think that is so cool. Anyways, that about does it for this episode of TVB Unscripted. Down there in the comments, do me a favor, leave me your questions. 
only three people have questions this month, and it was really cool because they uh, ask more than enough questions for me to fill up an entire video, but you guys can do better than that. I love answering your questions. It is one of my favorite fucking things in the world, so leave me questions down there, and hey, while you're down there, check out all the sexy links in the description box, the crotch bar, the doobly doo, whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and pick up one of my t-shirts if you have the money. If not, don't worry about it. Download my album, which is 100% for free. If you want to pay music, or if you want to pay money for it, you can. But you don't have to. I offer all my music for free. Uh, check out all the other sexy channels down there. Follow me on all the social media sites. But hey, most importantly, remember to like, comment, subscribe. The Brandon Brownson. Signing out. Okay, this thing's getting kind of itchy, so it's going to go off.